Welcome to my first video ever of my self crocheting. I'm going to be demonstrating the Tunisian pinwheel square, which is a pattern that I've designed and have had tested extensively. And I'm happy to be demonstrating it today. What I'm using right now are two colors of cotton yarn. These are just Aunt Lydia's uh, inexpensive cotton yarn. I've got a yarn needle with a y with a large eye, a pair of scissors, and one stitch marker. And right now I'm using a J 6.0 millimeter hook um, for demonstration purposes, but you can use larger or smaller hooks depending on how you want your project to turn out. A smaller hook will yield a very dense fabric, which is good for hot pads, tote bags, etc. A larger hook will yield a loose, more drapey fabric, good for shawls, blankets, etc. Okay, we start with the main color, which in my case is going to be white. Make a slip knot, leave a good yarn tail. I think that's about six inches because we're going to be using that to stitch, to uh, cinch down the foundation circle after we're completely done with this project. Okay, so I'm going to start by chaining four. slip stitch to join in the first chain that we made. Oops. Let's try that again. Separate out that circle so you can see the big hole in the middle. I'm going to set my hook down for a minute and I'm going to get a locking stitch marker to put in that hole. Okay, pick up my hook again, insert it back into the loop. Okay, so now I have a foundation circle and I'm going to chain 10. The point or the objective of the first forward pass is to obtain 11 vertical bars or 11 loops on our hook. In Tunisian crochet, we currently we we count the stitch the loop that's currently on our hook as the first stitch or vertical bar. I'm going into just the top loop only, not the back bump. I know that a lot of Tunisian patterns have you go into the back bump when you make your first row, but because we're going to be seaming this row with a mattress stitch, it works much better to use the top loop of the chain. So insert, yarn over, pull up, and leave it on your hook. Go to the next one and do the same thing. Now, I should have 10 loops on my hook because I haven't used the foundation circle yet. Let's count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now I will go into the foundation circle right in the middle of it, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Okay, we're ready for the return past. pass. We yarn over and pull through two loops. 
because we're making a decreasing triangle, we do not chain one. And every time we yarn over and pull through two, we are decreasing the number of loops that we have on our hook. And when we get to the last, just before the last yarn over and pull through, I'm going to show you how to add the second yarn. We're going to just be carrying it up the side of this decreasing triangle until we need it. But it makes a pretty pattern on the back of the project. So we're going to go ahead and start carrying it now. So I drape it over where I'm about to do my last yarn over. Yarn over and pull through. Now I'm going to give myself a little more tail because I'm going to have to, to sew that in, weave that in with a yarn needle later. Now I'm going to pull that second color down and to the back to get it out of my way. Okay, now we're going to do the next forward pass, working only in the vertical bars this time. Okay, I'm not working into the foundation circle until I get quite a bit farther along on this project. Okay, let's count. Two, four, six, eight, ten. That's good. On the first row, we had 11 loops on our hook, but we decreased by one, so now we have 10 loops on our hook. And now we're going to decrease by one again by not chaining one, but yarning over and pulling through two. Now as I work this pattern, I like to count backwards as I'm doing the return row, counting how many loops I have left on my hook. So I now have two, four, six, eight, nine, yarn over and pull through two, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and before I work the last yarn over and pull through, I'm going to twist this carried yarn. Now at the moment you can see that I've got the yarn twisted coming out of the balls, and I don't like that. I like to keep my yarn balls untwisted and untangled. So just to untwist the whole thing, I'm going to grab that yarn and or that piece and did you see what I did? I did a cartwheel with it kind of or a Ferris wheel. I completely rotated the work while holding my hook still. Okay, now let's make sure that these two are completely separated. They are. You see that? They're completely separated and untangled. However, we're now ready to yarn over and pull through again, and this time we still want to twist, we want to carry that yarn. So here's the fastest, easiest way I've found to do this. I'm grabbing the whole work right there, and I'm going to flip it, and then I'm going to twist the carried yarn over the working yarn, hold it down so that it's out of the way when I do my last yarn over. Now let's make sure that those two yarn balls are untangled. They are. This is good. I like it. And let's look at the back. You can see that we have now carried that 
second color behind the work and it's untangled from the skein or the ball. Okay, now we're ready for the next row. One loop is on the hook. Now two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're not working into the slanting stitch. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, now we're going to yarn over and pull through two and count backwards. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and it's time to twirl. So I grasp the entire thing, rotate it around the hook, which stays stationary, then twist the carried yarn over the working yarn and yarn over for my last yarn over and pull through. And the two skeins are untangled. See? Okay. Continue with this process until you have only two loops on your hook. Whoops. I will come back and see you there.